President Donald Trump has been indicted again at the federal level this time. He is accused of mishandling classified documents, obstruction, and other crimes. These 37 federal counts are in addition to the 34 state-level felonies. The 2024 GOP frontrunner faces in a separate case in New York relating to hush money alleged payments uh, allegedly to multiple women. Here to unpack what these charges mean and what comes next for the former president are former federal prosecutor Richard Convertino and white collar criminal defense lawyer George B. Danini. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Richard, I'll start with you. Between the federal indictment that was unsealed today, the charges out of Manhattan that we learned about earlier this year, he's facing dozens of counts now, potentially more for unrelated cases. Were you surprised by this latest indictment? Uh, no, wasn't surprised by the latest indictment. I was uh, surprised by the level of detail based upon the um, top secret and uh, confidential classified material that's, that's uh, allegedly charged or, or is charged. Uh, the indictment is very, very specific, very strong. It's, it's backed uh, by um, physical evidence, including surveillance films, uh, text messages, uh, and of course, witness testimony. Uh, and it seems replete and very, very complete. George, let's bring you in here. As a defense attorney, how does Donald Trump get out of this situation? These, these charges seem pretty heavy. Yeah, look, I agree with what Mr. Convertino said. There is a lot of detail in this 44-page, 38-count uh, indictment, 37 of which the, the former president uh, is in. And, you know, how do you get around it? I think you've got to spend a lot of time with he's going to have to spend a lot of time with his lawyers going through this document page by page, count by count, sentence by sentence, word by word to make sure, you know, what is the other side of the story if there is another side to what's in this document. What do you think about the recording that we're hearing about, that he is on a recording saying that he essentially knew that some of these documents were classified and that he did not have the power to declassify them? What do you make of that? I mean, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm, the fact that that exists, and obviously it's contained in this document, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the indictment right now, and it's paragraph 34 of the indictment, where he was meeting with a writer and a publisher in connection with a book that he was getting ready to put together. And it says in here, as he's talking about these documents, uh, it says that Trump state that, again, the indictment is just allegations, but it says, quote, except it is like highly confidential, and then he says, secret, this is secret information. And then I'm going down a little bit. See, as president, I could have declassified it. Now I can't, you know, but this is still a secret. So, you know, when I read that, I thought they've got the former president of the United States essentially acknowledging that he knows these materials that he has in his possession, which he should not have anymore by that point. Uh, were secret at least documents, classified it, documents. It's important to know what Joy, to pick up on, on George's comment uh, about secret. There's there's different levels of, of classification right. uh, and different levels that are charged. So there's thirty there's thirty one counts, uh, individual counts about ret retention of classified material. Twenty two of those counts, twenty two of those, and it's important regarding uh, regarding top secret, the highest level of classification, top secret. The reason that that's important, for, at least for, in, in my opinion, is that under the guidelines, the United States Sentencing Guidelines, top secret classification carries an additional, an upward departure in the guidelines for additional uh, time. Uh, and so I think it's um, top secret is, is three to six years additional time on the guidelines themselves, which assuredly uh, will, will uh, mean that uh, if either one of these two is convicted, in, in, in including certainly the former president, he will go to a federal prison. Richard, let me walk me through this here. I mean, he is scheduled to appear Tuesday in a federal courtroom. What's going to happen here? And, and when you look at this, is this a slam dunk case in your eyes where you say he's going to be doing jail time? There's no such thing, Jeff, as a slam dunk case. I, I, I can assure you beyond all peradventure. Um, now, the difference between, uh, as we were talking about earlier, the difference between the state and the federal cases is huge. Um, the federal convictions by the U.S. attorneys or the Department of Justice in general is about 98 percent. So it's as close to a slam dunk as you can get. And in particular, this case, the level of, uh, of 
particularity in the charges is, is, is meant to send a message, I think, in what, what we used to re refer to as a speaking indictment. And it's the only indictment I've reviewed hundreds and hundreds of indictments, uh, indictments and written them where I've ever seen pictures or photographs included in an indictment. This is, this is for Joe Bag of Donuts to look at this indictment, read through it, and be secured and convicted that this, these charges are not weaponized, which we've, we've been hearing quite a bit now. So on that note, George, without getting into the politics of it all, we will be doing that with another panel soon. Uh, does that help the former president at all? The fact that he, you couldn't be a more public person, it's highly political, will that somehow insulate him from any sort of repercussions? Well, look, this is obviously a high profile case. I don't think a case like, I don't think a case could be more high profile than this. Uh, does it insulate him? No. I mean, I think that what the special prosecutor Jack Smith said in his, you know, in his statement a few hours ago after the indictment was unsealed was that, you know, he's, and look, it's hard to do that, right, in this atmosphere, but he's looking at this case just like any other case, and the facts and the circumstances of his investigation brought him to these charges and the work of the FBI agents, the work of the prosecutors that are working under him came to this. I think his statement was nobody is above the law, so uh, the former president will be treated like any uh, criminal defendant. And, but, you know, that's important in our society and in our country because the former president or any person charged with an indictment, this is an indictment is only allegations. He's cloaked with the presumption of innocence and only until a trial by a jury who finds him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt will he be stand convicted of these counts. And until, unless and until that happens, that day is not now. All right. Before we go, quickly, if he was your client, huh. what would you be doing right now? Are you talking please, or are you ready to fight this? Well, look, uh, every case is on, it kind of stands on its own. I don't think, uh, from what I've seen of former President Trump and all of the things that he's had co to confront in his life, I don't see him pleading guilty, certainly not anytime soon. So I think the strategy may be dictated by the client here. And I think, uh, you know, everybody's in for a fight and a long one. Well, it's interesting because he said, his attorney today, this morning, said that Trump is ready to fight, and then the attorney later in the day resigned. Yeah. So that's an interesting You know, there's, there. a, there's, there's one point I'd like to make. This indictment, when you read it, all 49 pages of it, um, it cuts off at the time that they, that they board the plane to Bedminster, New Jersey. Uh, and then it goes into, I mean, the physical uh, um, plane ride, loading the boxes, going there. And then there's, it, it reverts back to the conversations regarding the, the uh, as George was saying, the reporters and, and the sharing of the information. But there's no charges that emanate from New Jersey. I believe that there is an ongoing criminal investigation in a seated grand jury in the District of New Jersey, uh, and I think we'll see more of this same case. Hmm. Well, it's something we will certainly be following closely in the days and months to come. This is former federal prosecutor Richard Convertino and white-collar criminal defense lawyer George B. Danini. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you.